Time now for the morning rush. And we start things with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Not looking at anything in the way of rain or snow today. It's a full day of sunshine. Temperatures warm again in the 60s, 70s and 80s with light winds. Sarah. A Southeast Albuquerque apartment complex is back open this morning after being put on lockdown as police search for a suspect. Residents are now allowed to leave and enter the Pearl at the Springs apartment complex along Gibson Boulevard. This after APD officers spent the early morning hours walking through the complex in search of that man, warning residents to stay inside of their apartments along the way. Our cameras captured a man being put into the back of a patrol car with handcuffs. Still no word on what his involvement was in the whole situation. Adam? We are expecting to learn more from APD today about a deadly crash near the Cottonwood Mall. Police say a pedestrian was hit and killed on Coors north of Seven Bar Loop. Police have not released any other details about that crash. We do know that APD closed the intersection while investigators were on scene last night, but it is expected to be back open in time for the morning drive. On to the news, a new video from Calibers is getting a lot of attention this morning. It shows creative ways to inspire people to sign up for firearms training. In a new series called Granny Grab Your Gun, martial arts comedian Master Ken shows you the trouble you could trigger if you don't know what you're doing with a weapon. The videos also show you how to fight off an attacker with a tutorial of how to use anything from kitchen utensils to even household pets. Dozens of jobs are coming to Albuquerque. Tech company Raytheon is preparing to open a new engineering facility soon. The Massachusetts based company develops civil defense and cybersecurity systems for customers in more than 80 countries. Both the state and the city invested in the new facility, creating 60 jobs for skilled manufacturing and engineering professionals. On to news happening today, President Trump is set to meet with Greece's prime minister at the White House. The men are expected to discuss the International Monetary Fund's role in Greece's third financial bailout. Also making headlines, three former U.S. presidents are also denying President Trump's assertion yesterday that they did not make calls to families of fallen U.S. soldiers. Happening today, NFL League owners, union leaders and players are set to meet to discuss that national anthem controversy. Trump has been vocal, President Trump, about players who kneeled to protest racial inequality. The quarterback who started the kneeling protest, Colin Kaepernick, filed a grievance against the NFL yesterday, accusing the owners of colluding to keep him an unemployed free agent. On to developing news now this morning. The city of Bloomfield will have to remove a Ten Commandments monument that sits outside City Hall. The monument was put up back in 2011. A year later, the ACLU challenged it, claiming it violated separation of church and state. The U.S. Supreme Court has declined to hear the case, meaning the earlier appeals court decision will stand. This morning, forest officials will likely continue working to help prevent forest fires in the Gila National Forest. Forest officials say in the last year, 82,000 acres were treated with prescribed burns or tree thinning projects. The Gila is considered a frequent fire forest, but thanks to ongoing work to prevent uh, to improve the forest's health, the intensity of the fires have stayed low. Evacuees in California are heading home this morning. This after a string of devastating wildfires there. The death toll due to the fires now stands at 41. Officials are also estimating the fires caused billions of dollars in damage. However, crews say they're cautiously optimistic this morning about progress that they made in the battle against the flames yesterday. The National Weather Service is also calling for rain later this week, which could help battle those flames. Kristen. Residents in Ireland are left picking up the pieces from now storm Ophelia. Three people died as the hurricane remnants hit the island, knocking down trees and power lines and whipping up 30 foot waves. As many as 400,000 homes and businesses were left without electricity. The storm is the worst to hit Ireland in half a century. Bringing you now closer home, today's Metro Threat Index at a zero. Nothing to worry about here in Albuquerque. We've got sunshine, high temperature, close to about 76 today, and those winds out of the northwest should stay less than 10 miles per hour. Crystal, this morning forest officials will likely continue to help prevent forest fires in the Gila National Forest. I'm sorry, we've already given you this story. Let's move on to the next. We'll move on to the native real ID story here in New Mexico. will now accept certain native tri American tribal documents to get a driver's license instead of a birth certificate. The Farmington Daily Times reports that the state's MVD will accept a certificate of Indian blood and an affidavit of birth issued by the Navajo Nation of Vital Records. Under the Real ID Act, those who want to use the state IDs to access federal facilities or board flights uh, must prove legal U.S. residency. This semester, the number of students taking online only classes at UNM is growing. This fall, UNM has more than 1,800 online only students. That's up about 300 from last year, more than 700 in 2014. That's a 65% increase in the last three years. Nearly one out of every three UNM students takes at least one online course. 
UNM says it sees the increase as a positive step toward broadening its student base. Kristen. Time now for a check on your morning commute. Not seeing anything major out there. Looking pretty good on both I-25 and I-40. And at this point, surface streets are moving smoothly. Of course, we'll keep you updated if we hear of anything out on the roads. New this morning, southern New Mexico has some new bragging rights as the state's largest export zone. The Albuquerque Journal reports it's taking the title away from central New Mexico thanks to a booming border port and declining activity at Intel Corp. The journal reports Doña Ana County's export stability is due to booming activity at industrial parks along the border with Mexico. Finally today, happening today, Albuquerque dancers have an opportunity to try out for a major performance. You recognize that music? Ballet students at Renee Antoinette School of Dance are auditioning to be part of Moscow Ballet's performance of The Nutcracker. The Nutcracker will play December 10th. It's so fun to watch. I can only imagine the yeah. honor that it is to be a part of it, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Cool opportunity. Yeah. All right, time now for the five counts. And we start with number five here. We're just over a week away from the annual Zubu at the Biopark. It's back for its 29th year. This will be held on Saturday, October 28th. There will be games, costume contests, haunted habitats, and of course, trick or treating around the zoo. Number four this morning, more than 120 names are on an online petition demanding the reinstatement of a New Mexico high school basketball coach. This after he was mysteriously fired. Until last week, Tomas Madrid was the varsity coach at Cuesta High, where he still teaches. He was hired last year in the small north town north of Taos, leading the Wildcats for a successful 17 and 9 season. The superintendent would not give a reason for the firing, saying it's a personnel matter. At number three, warmer temperatures across the state today leaves us in the mid 70s here in the metro sunshine overhead with those winds about five to 10 miles per hour out of the northwest. Increasing cloud cover over western New Mexico tomorrow. Albuquerque will see mostly sunshine with just a few high clouds by Thursday. Enough moisture to fire off some spotty showers out of our southern New Mexico. We will also see a slight cool down in Albuquerque. One or two spot showers possible by Thursday, but it won't be widespread. On to number two now, a district judge is expected to decide soon whether New Mexico Congressman Steve Pierce will be able to access a million dollars in campaign money. Judge Judith Herrera heard hours of testimony yesterday. Pierce filed a lawsuit trying to free up that cash that's held in a federally registered campaign funds account, saying that he wants to put the money toward his run for governor, which is a state-run seat. Secretary of State Maggie Toulouse Oliver says campaign finance rules only allow him to access $11,000 from that account because most of the money was raised for a non-state seat. Pierce's attorneys are arguing she is misinterpreting state law. Well, attorneys for the state deny Pierce is being treated differently due to party affiliation. And number one, APS preparing now to install some new security cameras on board more buses in the coming months. The school board's finance committee voted yesterday to spend about $200,000 to buy cameras for 70 buses. APS has been using security cameras on 30 buses since 2015. The district, which just got into bus operations again in 2015, says the cameras work to deter bad behavior and to corroborate stories on problem buses. APS says it's going to pick the routes with the most discipline issues and the busiest student load. And we've got more on this on our website, krqe.com, if you'd like to take a look.